In this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, we take up the Enterprise Incident. Compliance, the final frontier. Tom Fox is the voyager of Trekking Through Compliance. His mission? To explore the original series and seek out and share what it can teach you about compliance. Here's your host, Tom Fox. Trekking Through Compliance, Episode 57, The Enterprise Incident. In this episode of Tracking Through Compliance, we consider the episode The Enterprise Incident, which aired on September 27, 1968, and occurred on Stardate 5031.3. Story synopsis. Apparently suffering from the stress of command, Kirk begins to become irritable and irrational. He even in- orders the Enterprise across the neutral zone into Romulan space. Despite sensor scans, which show nothing within a parsec, the Enterprise is immediately surrounded by three Romulan cruisers. Kirk promptly sends a coded subspace message to Starfleet Command, apprising them of the situation. Subcommander Tall of the Romulan fleet demands immediate surrender of the Enterprise, then allows it one hour to decide. Meanwhile, the Romulans allow Kirk and Spock to beam aboard for an interrogation by the Romulan commander. Two Romulans are simultaneously beamed aboard the Enterprise as hostages. Kirk claims navigational errors led to the Enterprise straying into Romulan space, but Spock refuses to corroborate his story. Spock then says the strain of command has led Kirk to act irrationally and reports that Kirk ordered the Enterprise across the neutral zone on his own initiative and is not sane. Spock continues to act as a traitor in testifying against Kirk, and the Romulan commander convicts Kirk of espionage and courts Spock to join the Romulans as commander of the Enterprise under Romulan command. The Romulan commander takes a special interest in Spock, and Spock uses the opportunity to seduce her. Kirk is injured while trying to escape detention, and McCoy is allowed to beam aboard to treat him. McCoy corroborates Spock's testimony that Kirk is not fit for command and that he has been under extreme stress. Spock then agrees to take command of the Enterprise and lead it to a Romulan base. Upon saying this, he's immediately attacked by Kirk and defends himself using the Vulcan Death Grip. Of course, there's no such thing as the Vulcan Death Grip. The Romulans don't know that. The dead Kirk is then returned to the Enterprise with McCoy. Amazingly, it turns out that Kirk and Spock have been operating under Federation orders to steal the newly developed Romulan cloaking device, and that Spock has only given Kirk a nerve pinch in order to simulate death. Back aboard the Enterprise, Kirk is disguised as a Romulan centurion with the aid of plastic surgery to his ears and beamed back to the Romulan ship. Reports to Spock by communicator that the cloaking device is located near the commander's quarters. The communication is detected, but Spock is able to distract the Romulan commander who has changed into an evening gown at Spock's request. Long enough to enable Kirk to seal the cloaking device, which looks like a white sphere with a protuberance on top. The Romulan commander is outraged by Spock's treachery and further nonplus when he asks her straightforwardly, what the present Romulan method of execution is. Spock gains another delay by demanding the Romulan right of statement. Before before Spock can finish, Scott locates him and beams him aboard the Enterprise. However, the Romulan commander is able to grab onto Spock and be transported with him. Kirk attempts to use the Romulan commander as a hostage, but the scheme backfires when she orders Tal to destroy the Enterprise immediately. Luckily, Scott is able to connect the cloaking device to the shield as the Enterprise speeds away at warp 9. Thus cloaked, the Enterprise disappears from Romulan centers and escapes back to Federation territory. While accompanying the Romulan commander to the brig, Spock reveals to her in confidence that he was not entirely unaffected by her charms. Fun fact. The credited screenwriter, Dorothy D.C. Fontana, attempted to warn Roddenberry about fan reaction as Spock were allowed to behave out of character by having a romantic scene with the Romulan commander. Even with Nimoy's restrained gestural contact, Fontana was flooded with letters from fans. Aware of the pond far and believing it meant Vulcans had sex only once every seven years, they complained that the scene was out of character. To remedy this, years later, Fontana wrote sex scenes into the Vulcan glory on TNG, establishing the pond far only as a fertility cycle and that Vulcans can have sex anytime. The reception of this 
episode was somewhat uneven. And to uh, emphasize that, I'm going to read a quote from DC or Dorothy Fontana, the screenwriter for this episode, as quoted from Captain's Log, The Unauthorized Complete Trek Voyages. Quote, Overall, it was not a bad episode, but I did have a lot of complaints about it and things that weren't (coughs) approached or handled right. Let's face it, the romantic scene between the Romulan commander and Spock was totally out of context. Any Romulan worth her salt would have instantly suspected Spock because they were related races. That was wrong. Kirk's attitude was wrong. A simple thing, the cloaking device was supposed to be very small, about the size of a watch, where it could have been easily hidden. However, Kirk was running around with a thing that looked like a lamp, you know, highly visible. This is stupidity as well as illogical thinking. Visually, it was stupid. Conceptually, it was very bad. There were a lot of little things that were changed, and my biggest objection is the scene between Spock and the woman, because I really did not believe it, and I did not believe that that Romulan did not suspect Spock of something underhanded. She does not know enough about Vulcans, or rather she does know enough about Vulcan and Vulcans to know that something is afoot. Today I want to take a look at the key leadership lessons for the compliance professional from this episode, The Enterprise Incident. Number one, ethical decision-making under pressure. In this episode, Captain Kirk and the Enterprise crew engage in a risky and deceptive mission to steal the Romulan cloaking device. This requires Captain Kirk to make certain difficult ethical choices, weighing the potential benefits against the risk and moral implications of his actions. Compliance leaders must be prepared to make tough decisions that balance organizational needs with ethical and legal considerations, especially in a high-stakes or time-sensitive business situation. Two, maintaining transparency and accountability. Captain Kirk's deception and unauthorized mission led to tensions with his crew and Starfleet command. Compliance leaders must foster a culture of transparency where decisions and actions can be openly discussed, questioned, and justified. Establishing clear communications channels, reporting structures, and accountability measures is crucial for maintaining trust and credibility. Three, maintaining or managing rather sensitive information and technology. The Romulan cloaking device represents highly sensitive and potentially dangerous technology. Compliance professionals must have robust policies and controls in place to govern the handling, storage, and use of sensitive information and technology. This includes the implementation of secure access protocols, restricted distribution, and comprehensive data protection measures. Four, navigating complex geopolitical and regulatory environments. The mission to steal the Romulan cloaking device involves a delicate diplomatic and set of political considerations. Compliance leaders must be adept at understanding and navigating the complex regulatory and compliance landscapes which their organizations operate. This requires staying informed on relevant laws, regulations, and industry standards, as well as cultivating strong stakeholder relationships. And number five, balancing risk and innovation. Captain Kirk's decision to undertake the risky mission represents a calculated risk with the potential for significant benefits if successful. Compliance leaders must strike a balance between managing organizational risk and fostering an environment which encourages innovation and calculated risk-taking. This involves implementing robust risk assessments and mitigation strategies while also empowering employees to explore new ideas and solutions. By applying these compliance leadership lessons from the enterprise incidents, companies and compliance functions can enhance their ability to make ethical, transparent, and strategically informed decisions, even in the face of complex and high-stake challenges. I hope you'll join me tomorrow for another episode of Trekking Through Compliance when we take up the episode, The Paradise Syndrome. If you enjoyed this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, you can help it grow by sharing it with the biggest Trek fan you know. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.